welcome to Physiological Adaptations in Response to Training. In the HSC, PHPE, under Physiological Adaptations in Response to Training, your syllabus lists resting heart rate, stroke volume and cardiac output, oxygen uptake and lung capacity, hemoglobin levels, muscle hypertrophy, and the effect on fast and slow twitch muscle fibers for your learn about. Your learn two, which tells you what you have to do with the information, asks you to examine the relationship between principles of training and physiological adaptations and improve performance. Let's consider the aerobic adaptations. Stroke volume is the amount of blood pumped out of the left ventricle of the heart in a single contraction. Remember that this blood goes to the body. Training, especially aerobic training, will cause an increase in stroke volume. This is because the left ventricle increases in size, fills more efficiently, and contracts more forcefully. The result is more blood being pumped around the body per contraction. Stroke volume is directly related to cardiac output. Cardiac output is the volume of blood pumped out of the left ventricle per minute and is calculated by taking the stroke volume and multiplying it by the number of beats per minute to determine the volume moved each minute. Training, especially aerobic training, will cause an increase in cardiac output. This is because of the increase in stroke volume, allowing the heart to move more blood around the body at any heart rate than it did before training. Because of this, the body requires fewer heartbeats or contractions at any workload, including rest. This means that the trained athlete's resting heart rate will decrease because of training adaptations. Another reason for the decrease in resting heart rate is that training, again, especially aerobic training, causes your body to produce more hemoglobin. Hemoglobin is responsible for the transport of oxygen around the body. Oxygen binds to the hemoglobin and is then delivered to the working cells. A trained athlete will have an increased level of hemoglobin per milliliter of blood. This means that each milliliter of blood is delivering more oxygen than it did before training, and as a result, at any given workload, the body can use less blood to deliver the oxygen. This results in a further decrease in the required heart rate at any given workload, including rest. Increased hemoglobin and myoglobin levels cause an increase in oxygen uptake in the trained athlete. Oxygen uptake is the body's ability to absorb oxygen into the blood, transport the oxygen, and then transfer it into the muscle. Oxygen uptake increases in response to training and allows for faster and more efficient delivery of oxygen to the muscles. When it comes to lung capacity, there is actually little or no change between an untrained and a trained athlete. Within the type 1 slow twitch muscle fibers, we find an increase in aerobic enzymes, mitochondria density, capillary density, myoglobin, which is responsible for the oxygen transport within the muscle cell, and glycogen and fat stores. Now, most of these result in an increase in oxygen delivery to the muscle and to the working areas within the muscle where it's needed. These adaptations allow the athlete to maintain higher aerobic intensities for longer, recover the anaerobic and aerobic systems faster, exercise for longer, and improve focus and delay fatigue in the trained athlete. Muscle hypertrophy is an increase in the cross-section of the muscle. That is, the size of the muscle has increased. Muscle hypertrophy occurs more to type 2 fast twitch muscle fibers than to type 1, and therefore greater hypertrophy occurs from resistance training than aerobic training. Muscle hypertrophy results from an increase in muscle fibers and means the athlete becomes stronger, more powerful, and often faster as a result. Other adaptations that occur in type 2 fibers include an increase in anaerobic enzymes for glycolysis, increased creatine levels, faster lactate removal, which helps decrease the acidic levels in the muscle. These changes result in the athlete being able to maintain higher anaerobic intensities for longer, recover the anaerobic energy systems faster, and increase their strength, power, and speed. So what is the relationship between the principles of training, physiological adaptations, and improved performance? The physiological adaptations are the result of training and are responsible for the improvements in performance found in trained athletes. I want you to take some notes and bring them into class and we'll discuss what your ideas are. Oh.